In this video, I'm going to describe what the um, convolution of two functions is and where it arises in problems that involve inverse transforms. So while we're solving ODEs, we often end up with expressions that look like y of s, the transform of our solution, is equal to 2 over, let's say something like s squared plus s squared plus 4 sorry, times s squared plus 4, and I can factor that out to 1 over s squared multiplied by, let's say, 2 over s squared plus 4. And this one works out nicely because um, both of these terms in the product are just the transform of uh, simple functions that we are, should be familiar with. In particular, this is the transform of t. So this is Laplace transform, and this one is the Laplace transform of the sine of 2t. And so if I have to invert this, it would be great if I could just take the product of t and sine t and be done. But um, linearity works nicely through addition, but it does not always work nicely through multiplication. And this is an example where that does not work. We can't just take the product of t and sine 2t, but we can do something almost as simple, and that is um, we can use convolution. So what do I mean by convolution? Well, so let's see how that arises from the Fourier transforms. Uh, so we know that f of s is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus st times little f of t dt. And, um, and so we also know that g of s is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus st times g of t dt. Now I'm going to be taking a lot of integrals here, so I don't want to use t for all of these dummy variables. So let me erase this one and this one and this one and replace them with tau. So e to the minus s tau f of tau d tau. And I'm going to erase this one and this one and this one and replace that by, let's say, w. And now these are exactly the same transforms because I've just changed the dummy variable, but it makes my life easier when I start um, putting them together into uh, the product of f and g. So we have the product of f and g, and we'd like to see how these can be inverted. So if I put them just right up next to each other as a multiplication, that's what I've got on the left-hand side. So uh, e to the minus s tau f of tau d tau multiplied by e to the zero to infinity e to the minus s w g of w d w that is uh, exactly the same thing now i'm going to start moving things around a little bit and in particular this whole integration or this whole integrand here is independent there's no w in there that's only appearing in the other so it's a constant as far as the other integral is concerned so i can shuffle that whole integral inside here and write this down as the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus sw times g of w and now I'm going to squeeze in an e to the minus, uh, sorry, integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus s times tau f of tau d tau, and then that is all hiding within the w integral. Okay, so um, what does that do for us? This is not really any prettier, um, but you'll notice that this function e to the minus sw is independent of tau, so we can slide that inside this integral, and we get the integral from 0 to infinity of g of w, and then multiplied by the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the, and once I put it underneath the integral sign here, I can take the sum of these two multiplied by minus s, f of tau, oops, that's a tau, not a t, d tau, and all of that is within the w integral. All right, so now we're getting closer to some kind of transform that involves both of them, what we're going to do is we're going to replace tau with a substitution u equal tau plus omega, where 
omega is a constant with respect to the inner integral. So it's this integral that we're using the substitution on. And so what that means is we're going to have an integral from 0 to infinity of g of w, unchanged. But then this inner integral, now I'm just shifting tau by omega, or by w, so that doesn't change the limit of integration on the top, but it does change the limit of integration on the bottom. When tau is equal to 0, tau 0, we get w, u is equal to w. So that means we have a w bottom limit here. And that is going to be... Uh, in the integrand, we have e to the minus s, and we replace w plus tau with u, and that multiplies f of tau, which is now u minus w. So I've replaced tau completely by u, and because of the substitution, we have du is equal to d tau. So that gives us our du at the end there, and all of that is hiding within the dw integral. And now the g of w is a constant with respect to u, so we can bring that inside. And so now we get that f times g, capital F times capital G, is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity, the integral from w to infinity, of e to the minus s u, g of w, f of u minus w, du, dw. And so... Um, the last thing that we want to do is we want to rearrange these limits so that the inner integral here is with respect to w because that's the one that appears twice and we want to integrate these against each other first before integrating with respect to u. So we want to interchange these limits and let me just make it a little bit more clear by going from a to b in w Oh, sorry, no. Uh, let's see. So I want to go from A to B in U. So I'm swapping the integrals here, and I'm just using a C, A, B, C, D, and then we're going to figure out what those A, B, C, and D have to be. So we have E to the minus S times U, G of W, F of U minus W, and then DW is the inner integral. So now the question is, what is the correct domain of integration for this function? So, um, so um, let's see. Uh, so what we had originally, let's look at the u w plane. Originally up here, we had in u, so let's see, uh, the outer one in w, we were starting from w equals 0, and we were going up in w values. And for each fixed w in the outer integral, we would do an integral in u that was going to from w to infinity in the u direction. So that means that we start u was equal to w. u equal w is this line here. And so an integral from 0 to infinity and then an integral from w to infinity of du and then dw u is now going from whatever w value you're at off to infinity this way. So this is what we were integrating. First we go along these lines and then we move the lines up. So we go flying out in u from w outward to infinity and then gradually move step by step up in the w direction. So that was what our first approach or the first version of the integral and now we want to replace it by this one here and now we have to figure out what the limits are in this configuration. So what that means is we now are going to be incrementing u on the outside. And for each value of u, we want to go from down here to up here. So the w variable is the one that we're going to be integrating on the inside. And so that integral is going to go from, we're going to start, u is going to start from 0 and go off to infinity. That's all of these going this way. And then for each one of those with inside the integral, we're going to have an integral where w is going to be varying in this direction. w is going to have to start at 0 down here, and it's going to go up to wherever this line is. And this line, w is going to go up to u, whatever u value we're at. And so, um, and so that means that our limits of integration 
are going to be the integral from zero to infinity, uh, zero to u of, g oh wait, there's the exponential, there's e to the minus su, g of w, f of u minus w, d, and now we've swapped them, so this is dw, du. All right, so um, you'll notice this guy is independent of the inner integral, which is with respect to w. It's a constant, so I can pull that out. And that gives me the integral from 0 to infinity, e to the minus su, integral from 0 to u of g of w, f of u minus w, dw, du. And now you can see that this is some function that I am taking a transform of. So this is just the Laplace transform of integral from 0 to u of g of w f of u minus w dw. And so the inverse transform f times g has an inverse transform given by this integral. And this thing here is exactly what we call the convolution of f and g. So this is equal to the Laplace transform of f convolved with g. And so this is where the convolution becomes a useful tool, and that is in finishing off the final step of a whole bunch of these Laplace transform, uh, the transform of these solutions to ODEs. And there are a bunch of properties that I won't get to in this video of the convolution, but I will talk about those maybe in a subsequent video.